Hey folks, it's Jerry with TradeToFifth.com. Going to go through the uh, levels for next week and uh, talk through the IWM, Triple Qs, and SPY. Start out with the IWM, the Russell, as we did uh, have been doing for a while. And I want to take a look a little bit, zoom in on the daily here. And you can see the daily chart. Uh, we had a pretty good week. We had pulled back below last week the uh, 200 SMA and on the weekly chart uh, we're above the 50 week moving average we had a pretty bullish close for the week volume was pretty good here and um, last week and you see the RSI is not yet in the oversold zone and uh, we're still in pretty good shape on the daily RSI as well not oversold there this trend line that I had uh, or the center line of the channel that I had in this channel of had drawn for several years now uh, still is holding a support and we talked about last week pullbacks to the cloud looking for support and pulling back out and that's certainly what we did the top of the range here is uh, still 159.57 as we talked about last week we're still looking to reach up and potentially break that I've added a uh, been working on another indicator here for myself looking at uh, one, two, and three standard deviations of price action above the cloud. And you'll see here that uh, right now, until we get to about two standard deviations, this yellow line on my chart, we would not likely be in a strong pullback zone or really looking for strong pullbacks. And that's consistent where the daily RSI uh, and in the weekly RSI tends to get in the over bought zone. Uh, you can see we've spent a lot of time of it up in here and then we got to this extreme away from the 34 EMA cloud uh, we did have some pullback I will point out using uh, Paul's indicator here that uh, that is indeed a, a beautiful wave for pullback uh, you know we had from the low here I've isolated at this low we had a wave one two nice wave three uh, the 535 oscillator crested pulled back I can tell by looking at it that's uh, within a, uh, a zone that uh, Paul would suggest taking the signal on for IWM. Strong bullish breakout, uh, false breakout indicator up here. All the signs are that uh, IWM could be headed up into the target zone. Uh, the target zone is painted with his indicator uh, between 161.72 and 163.94, uh, which is a um, uh, the Fibonacci projection from this swing from three to four and then back out here. So IWM still to me looks pretty bullish and headed upward unless we get some activity uh, on the news side that does not help us. Another thing I'm going to do here real quick is we've talked about this reverse engineering RSI and that what that does is it says what would price be if the RSI using the volatility parameters around around this area gets up to 70 and you can see it's touched 70 a couple times here before it's pulled back so I actually have that on my studies and I'm going to turn it on and show the study and you can see I had it set to 70 with a 14 period look back length and it shows the IWM could get up to about one 78.82 which is at the top of the channel not surprisingly uh, and that would be well up here on the daily chart certainly would think that that would take quite some time to get up to the you know up in this area here um, but it is you know certainly possible for it to do that um, based on how many weeks it might take to do that that swing from the bottom of the channel to this area here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven weeks, right? So if this is the first week off the bottom of the channel, if it was going to get up there and have similar price action to this bullish activity, it's probably a good, you know, seven weeks or so to get up there. <coughs> it certainly could get up there. I'm not convinced. We're not. Uh, we're going to get up there as we did coming out of this V bottom. You know, at this point, I think more than likely we're going to get up to this mid period between the uh, high and the center line of the price channel. You can see 
often when we've gotten up into this area it tends to pull back and get kind of sticky and bounce around a while so if we do get up in this uh, let's say 168 to 170 range my guess is um, we're probably going to find some uh, choppy price action this was a nice correction by the way this uh, was an A, B, C correction and we are coming out of that so all the parameters tied to Elliott wave theory uh, at least as far as I know them and I try to keep it relatively simple you know uh, wave threes tend to look like nice smooth price action corrective waves end up looking kind of choppy and chunky and you can see all that kind of activity in here you know a nice ABC correction and we're still in a correction area because we're kind of through this choppy price action and um, you know I think this week with Google and Apple and some other earnings another big earnings week uh, this week coming up into the end of April um, I do think we're going to get some bullish price activity but of course as I say all the time anything can happen so you know there could be some China news uh, because the you know when they kicked the can down the road they kicked it down to the end of April and we're coming up to that uh, pretty quickly here so they're either going to move the the goalpost out into later time periods suggesting uh, continued successful talks or they're going to start getting a little bit uh, more anxious about making some progress on this trade deal in any event that's how the IWM looks we'll take a look at the Q's the Q's had a really strong week again you know the uh, tech earnings were good you know looking at several tech earnings we have now hit all-time highs and uh, from my uh, let's say rubber band indicator that looks at you know where price action is relative to uh, one and two standard deviations uh, we're getting up in that range where I would expect to pull back and uh, you know we are at we hit all-time highs on Thursday we had a pretty bullish close uh, here on uh, Friday you know we had a little bit of a pullback to the one standard deviation away from the the um, cloud and we still you know we closed up near the highs. so I think continuation is going to happen especially with the tech earnings we've been talking about uh, the RSI now has hit the you know up in this zone on the weekly so I do again look for potential pullback probably going to happen after the Apple and Google earnings if I look at my RSI indicator you know we're kind of at that where 70 is at this 191.22 and we talked about that uh, last week or the week before so to me it looks like you know we're in overbought territory and with the Apple Google earnings once they go by us I suspect we're probably going to have a pullback towards the cloud um, you know going into the end of next week that's my guess and look at uh, the spy oh sorry yes this is the spy uh, let's see we're gonna look at you know I have my two yellow lines marking off quarter two earnings uh, we had a pretty good week for the spy again S&P 500 Friday closed pretty much on the highs and, and often when I see that continuation is in order we probably are going to get up to this midline on the channel I have drawn before we get any any sticky price action again with the Apple Google earnings uh, wouldn't surprise me that you know we get a jump up and, and then maybe start looking at pullbacks towards the cloud we are you know we have been in an overbought area for the uh, S&P 500 now for several days the <coughs> sorry the weekly um, has not quite hit the 70 if I look at where price projects when I hit the 70 it would suggest we might get as high as uh, 303 which would be an all-time high uh, the triple Q's hit the all-time high as I talked about 293 to yeah 293.94 is the all-time high in the S&P 500 SPY so that 303 range is going to be up around this area here you know around the second deviation away from the 34 EMA cloud and you know anywhere between this channel and this line probably is going to be an area where I'm going to be looking for price to consolidate go sideways maybe a pullback to the cloud or the 21 EMA which is this purple line 
all those things uh, are, are kind of in my mind. We are definitely in a bit of a stretched out area on the SPY. And once the real big tech earnings in Apple and Google, which are probably the biggest uh, names coming up next week, kind of get by us, uh, I'll be looking for new all-time highs and then maybe a pullback. So that's where I've got on that. Uh, I do have levels for the ES, NQ, and YM. Uh, we did sit within the expected move for all three. Uh, the, the expected move last week was 49 for the ES. And uh, we're, uh, the expected move is a little bit higher at 53 bucks, so we're expecting a little bit more volatility next week. The NQ was 170 last week, it's 172 this week. And the YM was 470 expected move last week, and it's 490 this week, so a little bit higher. Uh, not surprising we're coming up to the end of the month. We may end up getting some uh, stock fund rebalancing. There are 50-50 bond and stock funds, and certainly the uh, the, the averages uh, that have been coming up in the, or the, the price activity uh, that's occurred over the last month have been very bullish in the SPY, the Qs, and the IWM, and, and you know other indexes. And those 50-50 bond and stock funds tend to rebalance toward the end of the month. We have not really seen a lot of rebalance activity through the first quarter of the year, however, so I would caution that I wouldn't be expecting, um, you know, based on what I've seen so far, I wouldn't be expecting any great amount of rebalancing if uh, the past is an indicator of the future, at least the last three months. I will quickly, before I close here, just point out, uh, we looked at our VIX indicator for the daily, and these are the Bollinger Bands on the VIX. We did have a little bit of put buying going into the close of Friday, maybe some protection being bought for people going into next week. You know, you like to buy protection when it's cheap, and we got down to this area here on the VIX. Uh, as you can see, it wasn't that low for many, many uh, weeks behind us, well back into uh, before the December pullback. So puts are pretty cheap. It's it's a good time to buy them to maybe hedge off, uh, you know, a quarter, a third of your portfolio, a little bit of insurance. When it's cheap is not a bad idea. Um, so buying puts or below market butterflies or calendars, uh, you know, 30 delta put calendars, uh, looking out uh, 60 days, those kind of things. All those are probably really good ideas uh, given that we might end up having uh, a bit of a pullback after the earnings next week. So that's it for this week. I'll send the levels out to Paul along with the video and uh, look to get it posted here pretty soon. Take care.